I know for for the last one week or so, so many of us have been so stressed uh, because of uh, the happenings of Shakahora. And uh, not just because of Shakahora happenings, but also because of remarks that have been issued by many people, including some ignorant bishops, and in particular, uh, probably the bishop who spoke from Yeri, who exposed his ignorance. I mean, that was the highest ignorance I have ever listened to all over my, my life as a minister of the gospel on issues pertaining to uh, miracles and uh, and the prosperity. What happened in Shakahora had nothing to do with miracles. People went for fasting and they were waiting for the coming of Jesus. That should be understood and it should be underscored by everybody in our nation. So to try and uh, mix the two is missing a mark. It is true, as the Swahili people say, that nyani aoni kundure. A man that is speaking against prosperity serves a church which is the wealthiest all over the world. It's the number one church. Most men of God will shy off from the so-called prosperity gospel, yet they are serving a rich God. The gospel by nature is all about prosperity. Prosperity of the soul, prosperity of our earthy, and prosperity of our lives. That's what the gospel is about. And therefore, I received a new education sometime last week from a bishop. Actually, I have always known that these bishops and these pastors, they know something about Christianity. I've only come to know that some of them know about Catholicism and they confuse Catholicism with Christianity. By the way, most of us grew and we never knew that some, some so-called churches were churches. We were told they were cults. Because all I can ask men of God probably as I begin to speak is that let everyone concentrate on what they were called to do. I was called by God to perform miracles and to conduct the difference and to teach the gospel and to lead people unto prosperity. And that is what I know how to do. Some men were called by God to enjoy celibacy. I don't know how to stay without a wife. Some of them are, are, are able to stay without women. Even though the Bible says they need to have one. They are free to enjoy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Yes. I, I say over the week that I will come and show you what the Bible says about what we need to do. And what has always been happening to those who do what we are supposed to do. Let men of God not shy. Or from telling the truth, like the Pentecostal brothers. We have a duty. God has exposed to us that a lot of ministers of the gospel are ignorant. And therefore we have a duty to give some education. It's an opportunity. And by the way, it is wrong for anybody. That's my understanding also. It is wrong for anybody to purport to be serving Christ without performing miracles. Christ said, I will form a church and the gates of hell shall have no power over it. Amen. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, say, you shall know them. The marks which mark a true apostle, they are signs, wonders, and miracles. When you are not doing a miracle, who, who are you? Are you in the category of performing miracles or asking in whose power they have been performed? We will answer you. And let me tell you the government and the church at large. And all these religious organizations that call themselves church. We are going to do more miracles from today. 
Miracles will happen in the presence of a man of God or in the absence of a pastor. Even those who say that they are fake miracles, then you should also understand that this the real miracle. Now, Acts chapter 4 and verse 17. The same chapter and verse 17, we are together. Now, beginning verse 16, what are we going to do with this man? They asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle. And we cannot deny it. This man shouting, they can't deny. I had one of them say, we require a certificate to perform miracles. We already have one. The Bible says we should do. We don't require a certificate from any government. We have been licensed to do miracles. When you are licensed to preach the gospel, the signs of power accompany you naturally. And the Bible says, and the signs of power shall accompany them that believe. If you believe, the signs will accompany you whether you like it or not. Praise be to God. Listen, they say, everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle. And we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn this man to speak no longer to anyone in this name. And verse 18, they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach all in the name of Jesus. Revival cannot be stopped. Men and women of God, revival cannot be stopped. Men of God all over the world who are led by the Spirit, let us move on. Revival cannot be stopped. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. We are looking at the story whether they were able to stop them. Praise God. Verse 28. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Verse 29. Now, these are the apostles praying. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And verse 30. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Lord, stretch out your hand. God will stretch his hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Acts chapter 12 and verse 3. You know, something will be happening in this country if we are not careful. And I'm asking the president and the nation to listen to my seven points this morning. It will help the nation to move forward. Amen. Listen. I read from verse 1, Acts chapter 12. It was about this time that Herod, Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. Intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, there are people who will be pleased by some of these kind of things. He proceeded to seize Peter also. And this happened during the feast of the unleavened prayed. I have seen men of God rejoice when their fellow men of God are arrested. That's immoral. It is immoral. Whether you like the man of God or you don't like it. Whether he took your members or he never took your members. You don't have the justification of being happy, becoming happy. It is God who is in control of the church. You cannot rejoice. You may not like him. He might have taken your members and some offering might have moved out of your church. But you have no justification whatsoever to rejoice when your brother is being persecuted. The best you can do is to pray. Amen. Is to pray. Amen. You may not agree with him or with them in matters of revelation. Because we can never, we can never, and the government must understand, we can never belong to one church. Never. 
We can never. If you want to regulate the church, when should they worship? Are you going to say everyone is going to worship on Sunday? Are you going to say everyone is going to worship on Saturday? Are you going to say all of us will join one church? The laws in Kenya which govern the church satisfy the criteria for church registration. For us, we are comfortable with it. A criminal must be dealt with as a criminal. The, the law and the constitution is clear on what should happen to criminals. And it is also clear on what should happen to freedom of worship. There is nowhere worship includes burying people. If somebody is killing and burying people, he's a criminal. He's not a worshiper. When we talk about freedom of worship, that does not include killing people and burying them. That is criminal. Because everybody has a right to life. And therefore it is the living who should be given the freedom to worship. So if somebody kills people, he is not a believer. He is not a brother. He is not a Christian. He is not a Muslim. He is not a Hindu. He is a criminal. Therefore, if your father is a criminal, it is not your family that is criminal. It is your father. Yes. Just like when your father is a believer, it is not automatic that the family loves God. Because this is a question of individual responsibility. We make personal decisions. And therefore, whatever, number one, whatever Mackenzie did, must be condemned in the strongest terms possible. And he must be prosecuted. And he must face the true colors of the law of the government of Kenya. And as a church, we have a duty to pray for him. And therefore, let the government deal with him as Mackenzie. And let the government leave every other worship alone to continue worshiping their God. Now, this is to the government of Kenya. The issue of Mackenzie Paul, Mr. Mackenzie Paul, should not be used by the government or any other religious body or any other society with an intention of scoring a particular goal. I know during the campaigns, some churches were inclined to a particular individual, and therefore some churches may feel they were left out, and therefore they may want to take advantage of this opportunity to score a goal. And that's why the government must be very careful. There are churches which are known commonly to be the one praying for leaders. And somehow this time they were left out. And therefore they are not happy. We know. You, this is pure hatred. We know. But I'm telling the government. This should not be used by anybody. Trying to score a particular goal. The government of Kenya must be very careful. Because the issue is beyond the killing people in Kirifi. Is a riddle and a trap. This is a political religious trap. And the government, if not being careful and the use of wisdom, they will fall into the trap. But I want to warn the government to be very careful on how they handle the issue of Mackenzie. Unless they single him out as Mackenzie, what is about to happen? they cannot be able to control it. When, we, when the Catholic Church begins speaking to us and we begin speaking to them, what we know about them, the state cannot control the religious animosity which is about to happen. The hatred among churches. Let me tell you, men of God, we should not take advantage of the killing of people and begin to show our hatred to one another. 
to expose our nakedness. Some people have had historical hatred. And they are using this opportunity to bring it out. It's a shame. Some people that are respectable, great men of stature, given audience on national television just to speak your ignorance. People are afraid. What might be the next move of the government? I am warning the government. The issue of Mackenzie. Mackenzie Paul must be singled out as Mackenzie Paul. But if you allow some religious people to speak about what we teach, to lecture us about what we teach, we will lecture them about what they teach. And let, let me tell the government, we will, we will tell you, we will tell you, we are not going to be quiet. No! They will speak, we will speak. They will speak, we will speak. It, it is high time those ignorant bishops keep quiet. We are quiet for a while, but we will speak. We will speak. We will know the source of your authority. How do you come in the open and see the miracles we perform are fake? Now, if someone says that we need a license to perform miracles, and that if a miracle does not happen, somebody has to be prosecuted. Now, I'm also asking the government and their bishop, so-called the Haki bishop. Now, I'm asking them, what if the miracle happens? Will the government calculate the amount of money the individual could have spent in hospital and give it to me? Because I have done something to help the government. All some bishops think we are ramshackled, we are from the bush, we are chacobanas, we have no brains to think. We have been to school. Some bishops think they have been to school more than us. No, we were senior lecturers called by God. We abandoned responsibility, came to preach the gospel. We are not from the bush. You can check our academic history. We used to be number one. We were, you think receiving the Holy Spirit is one plus one. What we have done is to keep silent so that we can coexist. Let nobody think that we don't know anything about them. We know too much about you. And I may not speak some of the things I know here. But when the worst happens, every mouth will be open. issue is not very well handled, it will soon escalate. It will take a political, religious dimension. Please, government, I beg you, handle the issue of Mackenzie as Mackenzie alone. Leave every other thing alone. If you have an intention of doing anything matters church in the future, keep it with yourself. But for now, Ando Mackenzie as Mackenzie. Yes. This thing will take a twist that you have never wished to witness all your life. Religious and political. You hear, some people are now saying, Evangelist Ezekiel was preaching with Dorcas. Who was he supposed to preach with? Dorka is a pastor. Yeah. She must preach. Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. And wherever she is, the demons must go. Yeah. I don't know. They, they spotted who in a prayer meeting. Anything wrong to be attending a prayer meeting? Even pagans attend prayer meetings. Anything wrong with the prayer? What we must deal with is Mackenzie Tequila. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, most men of God are 
are exposing their hatred for one another. And they are trying to influence the government with those skewed accusations so that they can influence the government to make decisions against particular individuals of the church. A section of the church. It must not be allowed to come to pass. We will forever be different. But we must be, our, our diversity must be the cost of our unity. If we are mature. Yes. Our diversity must be the cost of our unity if we are mature. Yes. Do you people know that as I stand today, I somehow embrace every church. Yet I don't believe as they believe. I have grown to embrace even my own accusers of the past. Yet I know what they teach is not what I teach. And yet what, what I teach is not the standard. And what they teach is not the standard. Nobody can purport to say that their way of life is the ultimate. That they, their understanding of the Bible is final. No. <laughs> that nearly gentleman speaks with finality. I have never seen men who speak ignorance with finality. Ignorance. You speak ignorantly, but as if you are final. And so many people love it because he has the audience. He has the media support. It makes, a, 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 it, makes it appear as if the miracles we do are fake. As if all of you see that here, you don't understand anything about miracles. It makes it appear as if the gospel is, is supposed to be without miracles. Yet the apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4, he says, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the spirit's power. Chapter 4 and verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in mere talk, but in power. And believers shall be given power. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Let it be in record that um, on the issue of regression with us, we are comfortable with uh, the extent to which the government has regulated the church. It must also regulate other religious organizations within the same law, but not getting out of what is in the Constitution, freedom of worship, and the right to life. Praise God. We might not discuss more about what we believe is church. And there's some men that have been speaking on behalf of the church. With us, we believe they are not part of us. They are not part of the church. And therefore, the government should be aware that uh, those who have spoken to them have not spoken on our behalf. We have men of God that we believe can speak on our behalf. The likes of Dr. Joe Kayo. The likes of other Gitonga Bishop, the likes of Bishop Makarioki, the likes of Bishop Kefaumai. Let the Catholics speak for the, on their behalf. Let them speak to their brothers. We are not their brothers. We are not. We are not. I'm speaking in a polite tone for the government. We are not their brothers. We are their relatives. When it, it, it will come a time for people to speak for one another, let the Adventists speak for themselves because they worship on a Saturday, which they believe is Sabbath. Let the Catholics speak for their people. And let the Evangelicals speak on their behalf of their people. Let the Catholics speak on their people. And for those of us, who believe otherwise. Let the Muslims speak on their people. 
let the Hindus speak on their people. And for those of us who believe otherwise, we have our fathers of the nation. They will speak to us. We will listen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Our understanding of church is where gifts of the Holy Spirit are included. That includes the speaking of tongues. Something I doubt whether has ever been spoken in the so-called churches. We also believe that miracles must happen. And any man of God who purports to be a man of God must be known by them. We also believe that where a church is, demons are cast out. And that hands are laid on the sick and they get well. That's what we be. That is a summary of what I understand about church. Church is where hands are laid on the sick and they get well. It's where miracles are performed. And it's where the gifts of the Holy Spirit are exercised. That's my understanding of what church is. Anything outside that, according to me, and according to many of us, is not church. And that's why I said some people that call us our brothers, they are not our brothers, they are our relatives in the spirit. Our brother and sister are people who do what we do, who believe in what we believe. And they will share destiny. And those people also who don't do what we do, they have their brothers and they have their sisters. But to us, they are relatives. And therefore, we rate on that basis. And it must be understood. Let the government uh, take caution on that. And uh, we should not be included. We must be understood by the government. And it must be clear that that is who we are. And that is our stand as Gospel Embers Chapel in Jesus' name.